I'm wondering. Nine, I'm wondering whether that. Eight, whether you can hear seven, me. Seven. Enjoy. Six, five. Hi everybody and welcome to Mercedes Dialogues. I'm Ramona Arena and as always, we bring you something very exciting. What do we bring you? We bring you an open conversation with, of course, the MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz India, Mr. Roland Folger. He answers all of the questions that you ask across the various social media sites that Mercedes-Benz has. And as always, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure doing this with you. I love it. I have so much fun. Thank you very much, Ramon. <laughs> Same here. And as always, clearly our audience loves it mm -hmm. because we have so many mm -hmm. questions that have already come in. And of course, we take live questions as well. So, That's should we get going. started? Perfect. Awesome. Already. <laughs> so the first question comes from Akshit Sood and he's from Pune. He says, hello, sir, according to you, which is the most fascinating feature of the E-Class? The beautiful E-Class that we launched right today. Yes, yes, the new E-Class. Actually, it's a vehicle that we're extremely proud of ourselves, but uh, my personal feature and my personal preferential feature is the reclining seat. Mm -hmm. the reclining seat that comes back all the way to 37 degrees and is combined with a very, very smooth, very nice pillow that you can rest your head in. Yes. So that definitely from my side is, is my favorite features. But it's a close run up because we have some other very lovely things as well. We have air body, uh, air body control, which is the dampening system that we have never had before and seen in the E-Class. Mm -hmm. It's just thrilling to be able to ride the vehicle in every which way you want it. So yes. it's not just comfortable in the rear, it's also highly comfortable and, and it's very sporty if you want to drive it yourself. So best of both worlds, as we say. Absolutely, and I even like the lights. So many colors to choose 64, from in there. Actually. I know. Yes, exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> One for Lots every mood. <laughs> All right. So should we move on to the next question? Please. Yes, of course. Okay. So it's from Prashant, who's from Mumbai, and Prashant says, "Where is the luxury in the new E-Class? Behind the wheel, or is it in the rear of the car?" That, as usual, depends very much on the eyes of the beholder, as they say. Yep. And I think in that in that case for the E-Class, it's both again the best of both worlds that we try to achieve. Because when we're talking to our customers, we found out during the week, they usually drive with the vehicle um, and they're more chauffeur driven yes. uh, because they go to work, they go to meetings. So for them, it's very, very comfortable if they can spend time uh, professionally and also in helping provide better business. Now, on the weekend, however, the same customers basically might want to drive themselves. Mm -hmm. So the vehicle is capable of uh, doing exactly that. It gives you 50% more room in the back of the vehicle. Um, that means ample of space that we've never had before or seen anywhere else in that segment so far before we basically brought the long wheelbase uh, E-Class. But um, it is also a lot of fun to drive and uh, our transmission like the 9G Tronic which makes shifting nearly impossible to detect but gives you very, very nice performance. That coupled with a very nice and very, very exciting um, engine in the vehicle as well. That together again with our, with our suspension system uh -huh. makes driving, if you want to drive yourself on the weekend, such a pleasure that you will not forgo that usually. So luxury in the front, luxury in the back. Yes. It is Mercedes-Benz after all. What did you expect? <laughs> exactly, Prashant, what did you expect? All right, now let's move on to Manoj Shah, who's also from Mumbai. He has quite a long question. He says, Dear Sir, first of all, congratulations on the launch. I am a Mercedes loyalist and currently drive the fourth generation E-Class. I intend to buy a new E350 CDI LBW and my question to you is by when will the delivery for the new E-Class start? Will it be in the first week of March? That depends very much naturally, but thank you Manoj. First of all for being such a dedicated customer and long-standing customer with our brand for all the trust that you've put into the brand. From our perspective and what we're looking for at the moment is naturally the first cars have already left and are about to leave our factory going out to our dealers. So hopefully you already have an order with an existing dealer mm -hmm. or at least you should go very, very fast, go out there and talk to one of our dealers and securing an allocation for you because as we've seen and announced today, prices are hot, our service packages are even hotter 
and that in combination with an outstanding vehicle concept and product that we have never seen before in the Indian market, uh, basically you better be quick and uh, secure your allocation and uh, then hopefully we can continue to see you as a customer, otherwise unfortunately you would have to wait a little bit. All right, so I hope you are happy with your answer. Now we have a live question. So one mm. of you have obviously just sent it in on okay. either Twitter or Facebook or Good. one of our many social media wagons. Um, it's Vishal Chopra from New Delhi. And he says, Dear Mr. Folger, congratulations on the E-Class. I'm a happy C-Class user for the last one year. I see the new E-Class visually very similar to the C and the S-Class. Mm -hmm. Could you please give me a good reason to upgrade to the new E-Class? <laughs> Naturally, the easiest answer would be no, we don't need to. Give. If you're happy with your C-Class, stay with the C-Class. Because again, the waiting list that we expect is going to be rather long. Yes. But if you're in the market for a vehicle that gives you premium comfort in the rear of the vehicle. If you're looking for a 37 degree reclinable rear seat that gives you all the space that you would have ever needed in a medi medium size a luxury uh, car from Mercedes-Benz, then you're definitely our customer. But if you're driving more, let's say 80% of the time by yourself and you're not really chauffeur driven, then basically you should be happy with the C-Class, which is one of our best selling and hottest car that we have in the C-Class segment in the first place. So Absolutely. More than welcome. And if we have anything that we can help you with, just give us a call or go and see one of our dealers. Okay. So up next, we have Dr. Lakshmanan from Bangalore. And he says, what are your plans for hybrid conversion mm -hmm. of the E220? That's a very good question. Thank you very much, first of all, because hybrid is something and hybridization of our vehicles is something that is very dear to the brand Mercedes-Benz in total. We have made uh, sincere steps in moving into electrification of our vehicles. We have practically hybrid, full hybrid, but also plug-in hybrid versions available for nearly all of our vehicles that we have in our product lineup. So we're very comfortable with our product offering, so to speak, but uh, it depends, especially in India, highly on the taxation system. The present uh, tax breaks that we were given by the government do not make uh, hybrid vehicles really attractive for the Indian market. So basically our future is more uh, defined by looking into how can we bring, for instance, Euro 6 vehicles uh, sooner into the Indian market than it is absolutely necessary or dictated by the government. Hmm. All right, up next from Kotayam, we have Binu Varki and he asks, how is Mercedes going to tackle the green tribunal restriction on diesel engines above 2000 cc? Ah, oh, okay, good. Thank you. Um, actually, we've done that already. Uh, because starting on the 16th of December 2015, we had started out um, with being affected by the diesel ban in Delhi and NCR. Yes. Uh, we then went ahead and had several discussions with the Supreme Court, trying to bring across our point and our version of looking at things, whereas the impact of banning diesels above two liters, especially in our case, they were uh, Euro 4 or Barrage States 4 level vehicles, that that did not make a whole lot of sense as far as cleansing the air in Delhi or NCR was concerned. Finally, in August, we got through and in one of the settlements that we found there, we from our side were basically uh, approaching the Supreme Court with a solution where we said, we will pay from our pockets, not the dealer, not the customer, we as Mercedes from our side would be paying a 1% environmental protection charge into an account that is defined by the government. Um, in order to be able to continue to sell our diesel vehicles, uh, also above two liters, in the market in Delhi and NCR. Okay. And that's where we stand at the moment. That's why since September last year, we have been able to register again our diesel vehicles above two liters, also in Delhi and the NCR. Okay, cool. Yeah. We always have a solution. <laughs> sometimes better, sometimes not. Okay, so our next question comes in from Mumbai. It's from Suhail Sharik and he says, how is the new E-Class more customized and tailor-made for Indian driving conditions? Perfect, good point. Um, because we're very proud about what we have achieved. Uh -huh. It is the first ever E-Class that we have made in India for, for the Indian India. market. Yes. And uh, proof, as they always say, is in the pudding. What you can see is basically this vehicle is really only sold around the world in India. It's the only place where we sell a right-hand drive, long wheelbase version. Wow. And it is simply because Indian customers have a specific 
set of expectations, especially in the E-Class middle luxury segment, whereas Indian customers are predominantly chauffeur driven. We have talked and we have sold in the last, I would say, 10 years about 34,000 E-Classes in India to customers. So we know pretty well what customers expect from us. And predominantly what we hear from them is they would like to have a vehicle that is comfortable and is offering them, especially during the week, a vehicle that they can work from. So this idea of a mobile office is coming into play. So if we look in also into the future and we consider how is the engine traffic going to change, at the moment, I have my doubts whether it's going to be improving very soon. Yep. So what we also expect is that the situation is rather getting worse. That means, unfortunately, dear customers, you're going to spend more time in your in car, car than ever before. Yeah. And I think that makes a vehicle with basically so much room, 50% more leg room than in the previous vehicle. That combined with a very comfortable ride, um, that combined also with the ability to uh, basically move the seat in front of you yes. back and forth according to your specific needs. I think that makes a lot of these features really, really relevant for our key customers. And you can also have a nice, comfortable power nap in the car if you need to no, when we're you're working. stuck in traffic. Sorry, Ramona, we're working very hard in our <laughs> E-classes. All right. Of course, well, power nap is, 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 a, it's is important, doable. It's important, you know. <laughs> yes. So you can work harder afterwards. Exactly. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> So the next question comes in from Trichy and it's from Praveen S. He says, Dear Mr. Folger, congrats on the new E-Class. The E and S are now closer than that of the alphabets. My question is, how would you justify the masterpiece of intelligence tag in India when we do not have the radar authorization and it is a semi-autonomous car in some parts of the world? Well, again, I think it is it needs to be understood what have we been trying to achieve. The S-Class is already a long wheelbase. It's not the same car that you see predominantly in the US market or that you see in other markets around the world or in Europe. So it is already a long wheelbase. So basically what we have done is we have just been successfully now found an answer to all of these questions that we always had. Where does an E-Class properly fit in? Mm -hmm. And it was definitely by moving closer to the S-Class. The S-Class, however, in itself, because of its pricing and because of all of its creature comfort, is still the iconic Mercedes-Benz vehicle uh, that we have in our portfolio, and it's very difficult to make that any better. So still, a lot of customers might be asking why, why can't I get that feature from the S-Class, mm. or why do I not have that feature <laughs> from the S-Class? Uh, the reason is naturally also because both are having their proper place in our vehicle lineup and both providing for their specific customer groups the ideal solution actually to, to their requirements. Now coming to this autonomous car and, and driving concept, my personal impression about India is first of all you need, you don't need rules because you have plenty of rules in India, yes, we do. but you need enforcement and uh, autonomous system rely heavily on other participants in traffic obeying to those regulations. Yes. Now, the autonomous systems that we usually have in place are basically geared for the US market, for, for the uh, European market, maybe for Japan. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we're not planning to introduce anything in the near future into Asian markets in total. So neither China, nor India, nor any of the other Southeast Asian markets at the moment are feasible from our perspective. And that's not only a technical challenge, it's also a legal challenge. Because you need to have a legal framework that clearly defines roles and responsibility in case something goes wrong. Yeah. Because how are you going to settle uh, cases and potential lawsuits between a machine and a human being? A human being claiming he was doing the right things and the machine cannot yes. even defend itself. Is that then going to be our responsibility? These things need to be clarified and I believe especially in a country like India where you have more exceptions than you have rules, yes. uh, it's going to be an interesting challenge to see how that goes. But you have a very good point that I wanted to also rehash on that a little bit. The good point um, that I'm seeing is we need to have a clear understanding also uh, when can we get additional benefits from radar based system into the country. That's why we are discussing and we have reopened the whole discussion again with the government because 
the certain ministries have to basically uh, approve opening up still two frequencies mm -hmm. that we're looking at. I think it's a 27 uh, gigahertz and it's the 79 gigahertz okay. uh, range that we are hopefully getting approved um, in the near future by the government. And then we can also bring in all these road hand, uh, lane holding uh, features that yes. we have readily available in other countries as well. That but that's that's cool. the near future, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, our next question is from Arun Joseph Joy from Thiruvananthapuram. Oh, this is And this is a live question. He asks, what makes the new E-Class different from its rivals? Performance, luxury, smooth handling, or is it some other feature altogether? My perfect question. All of <laughs> the above. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, I think what we have been able to do and what the team has been able to do with the new E-Class is we have defined the segment in a completely different and very, very new way. We have added the luxury of space to a segment that was rather, I wouldn't say cramped necessarily because the vehicles are still large, but we have added with the rear space and the, especially the rear foldable uh, uh, um, rest, yes. the backrest. Um, we have added a dimension to our vehicles that you won't find anywhere unless you go up to the segment of S-Class and other competitors in that segment as well. So in a sense, uh, this is a new standard that we have introduced. Um, we have also added now with our new suspension system another area that uh, nobody has in that segment for instance uh, and nobody will be able to provide in the near future either. That combined with a clear also focus on what the driver needs to be able to pleasantly uh, chauffeur his own vehicle around and mm -hmm. enjoy himself while doing that. The combination of comfort in the back with fun to drive in the front, I think uh, hardly anybody, practically nobody out there has and is even at the moment coming anywhere close to that. All right, that is great. Makes me feel even better. <laughs> Okay, so Atul Asher from Mumbai, your question is coming up next. He asks, or rather he says so far, I am an existing E-Class customer. He's got the E250 mm -hmm. and he's owned the car since the past year and a mm -hmm. half. He wants to know if this new refreshed E-Class comes in the CBU format. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, will it be in a petrol variant only? And what would the on-road cost in Mumbai be? Good question. Um, actually, there is no CBU version for the vehicle because the CBU version is the vehicles that we normally import from Germany. But as this is the only place in the world where a long wheelbase right-hand drive version of the new E-Class is built, there is simply no chance to have a CBU model because this is the only place where they are built. Yes. So that's why we have only locally manufactured E-Classes available. And we are ramping up as we speak quite significantly due to the interest that we have seen so far already our production capacity to make sure that we can as quickly as possible fulfill all of our customer needs in that respect. The um, next step would be uh, we have in our product portfolio at the moment available as far as engine is concerned the E200 petrol version mm -hmm. and we have also a E350 diesel version available. Yes. Um, both of them are basically positioned as we usually do when we ramp and bring in new vehicles 8% above the previous vehicle's price. But this is not my key point that I was trying to make. Actually, we have added now service packages mm -hmm. that start for two years, for instance, at the 200 petrol version, that start for two years at a price level of 64,700 rupees already, uh, basically giving you a complete worrisome, uh, worry free. Worry free, thank you very much for <laughs> correcting me. A completely worry free experience yes. in, in using your vehicles. We have more than 45 different versions to choose from. So please, customers, if you're out there, if you're interested in a new E Class, but also other projects as well, check out our new. Uh, the service packages, they are so aggressively and interestingly priced, there is no way how you can basically walk away from that. So okay. more than welcome in looking into that. It's really a special deal that we have created for launching the vehicle. Also, they go up to like 10 years, right? If I'm all the way up to 10 years. That's why we create this 45 different versions. It's basically all out there for the two different uh, engines. Uh, basically also out there for two, three, four, five years, all the way up to 10 years. And awesome. unlimited mileage, also a first one in the automotive industry. Ooh, nice. 
nice. If we do something, we do it seriously and we go all the way. And we do it right. <laughs> the best or nothing. <laughs> right. And the prices? Uh, the price helped me. What was the one ex Mumbai? Somebody in the audience can give me a price ex Mumbai? 50 for the E200. Everybody's staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> there are quite a few people here. <laughs> so, yes. 56.15. So, there we have it officially. Ex Mumbai showroom, it's 56.15 in rupee. For the E200 petrol, yes, yes correct. All right, perfect. Well, I hope that answers all of your questions because you really did have quite a few questions. Okay, let's move on to Shiva E, who has sent in a question from Chennai. He says, with extraordinary high-end features and exclusive luxuriousness, what makes Mercedes think that this is the right time to launch the new E-Class? Availability mm -hmm. is what strikes me. Um, and basically, the pot possibility for us, we don't have such a chance very often in our, in our lifetime or when looking at our products. And uh, for us to have the combination of a new E-Class introduction in right-hand drive to combine that with the long wheelbase on, uh, that, that we basically import from China and its components and that we can locally manufacture, it's a, the best opportunity that we could have ever had. Now, it includes a few risks uh, because uh, naturally with additional, with additional features comes a certain amount of costs, but we have been able, the whole team working very hard together with the guys in Germany and in China, we have been able to keep the costs in check. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to also with a very aggressively priced uh, service package uh, to basically come back and make those vehicles more attractive than ever. Yeah. So opportunity was certainly driving our, uh, our decision, decision in this case and uh, what we have heard so far from the markets, from customers, what we had so far also from the media is excessively positive. So the feedback is also very good and very there. Fantastic. All right, let's move on to Anshul Jain from Alwar who asks, are you going to launch the short wheelbase E-Class in India anytime soon? Uh, no, not at all. Actually, we have no plans whatsoever to do that in the foreseeable future. It is very simple. We believe that the E-Class in its present uh, configuration as a long wheelbase um, vehicle is the ideal vehicle for the Indian marketplace. And uh, therefore, we have also, with an aggressive pricing, managed to put it right where we leave it's proper. Um, basically, a, a shorter wheelbase would not have any price advantage over that vehicle. And with the combination of being a very driver-oriented vehicle yeah. and at the same time offering the comfort in the rear, even a normal wheelbase would not have any advantage over the vehicle. Which does not mean that there will not be some CBU units brought in later on as well, but that is not going to be our personal uh, drive forward. This, we, we always are able to react to customers and their wishes, but uh, it's not something that we would want to do. All right. Or would want to recommend either. <laughs> okay. So our next question mm. is a very interesting question. It comes from Bangalore mm. and Sachin asks, why aren't you more focused on electric cars like Tesla? Well, first of all, the question would be, why would you think we're not focused on electric cars? Um, if you were following the Mercedes trail recently in the last larger motor show in Paris, I think we have come out with a very clear strategy of what we're going to be bringing mm -hmm. into the worldwide markets from an electric vehicle uh, perspective. And we have made it very, very clear that within the next six or seven years, we will be adding nine vehicles to our overall lineup against the three that Tesla has at the moment. Um, I'm personally not so much in favor of the Tesla concept, frankly speaking, because it still needs to be seen whether they will be around in another three or four years from now. Uh, it sounds very nice, but then again, uh, so far they still have to provide facts to the figures that they can achieve all of the things that they had promised so far. Um, and I think simply, and maybe that's a company speaking that has been around for 130 years, we're looking at all these startup guys also um, seeing is believing. Yes. So we're waiting for, for them to introduce something new that is really capturing customers in a larger way. 
Um, we are at the moment working very hard, however, to fulfill customer needs wherever they might come up. Uh, as far as electrically powered vehicles is concerned, we know for a fact, and we have looked at that excessively also within Europe, um, where are the real drivers for that need. We would be more than happy if we would come up to maybe 10%, 15% of all vehicles being electrically powered. Yeah. That would be already a major success. But you have to think in a larger term as well. And if we're talking about India here, then actually the first question would be, is there enough support yes. that the government is basically putting into this equation to make it more attractive for India? Because these cars are by far more expensive than anybody at the moment would even consider purchasing. And if you look at that, there is no real solution of what happens after four to five years, what happens with the batteries of these vehicles, yes. and also not to see really where does the energy come from. Because if you still have coal that provides you with the energy, it just means that you're moving your emissions from one place to, to another place, yes. which is not really what we consider makes a lot of sense. But we're working on the issue because we're working also on finding the proper resources, mm -hmm. the proper sources for the energy. And, uh, and we believe that in the longer term, yes, electric vehicles will find their way into the propulsion system as well. Do you think solar power is a good way to go as well? Yes, but it's a very expensive way as well. Mm. And uh, dust does not help. So if you put solar cells into an area where there's lots of dust, it reduces the efficiency. There's tons of things that you need to take into consideration when you go that way. And it's easy to write about that in newspapers or to make some statements from a government side. It's much, much more difficult to put that into real work. Um, but we're committed to that direction and we will come up with such vehicles. We have a concrete plan on how we want to roll that out as well and mm -hmm. how we're going to finance that without creating tons of losses and, uh, and cash flow problems for the next five years to come. Awesome. That was a good one. All right. So this is going to be our last question right now. This has been a good session. You've answered quite a few questions. Good, yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the last one, and of course, we're going to make sure that it's a live one. So this is Syed from Kerala, mm. and he asks, does the car have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? Great finish. Of course. There's, there's your answer. Short, sweet, <laughs> and precise. <laughs> well, thanks for the questions. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Roland. It's always so much fun sitting here with Enjoyed you. Enjoyed it very much. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. And all of you guys, don't forget, if you have any questions that you would like to have addressed or answered directly by the MD and the CEO of Mercedes-Benz India, all you do is write in to us across any of our social media platforms. And if you're lucky enough, they'll be picked and I'll be asking him the questions. Until the next time, I'm Ramona Arena saying bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you very much for your questions.